Today, I'm going to talk about two important things that you will probably start to see a lot more out there dealing with AI, as well as lots of different talk associated with what's coming. So I wanted to be sure to at least give you some better overall understanding about this. The two topics are AI search and then AI agents. To begin with AI search, this deals with the added capability now of OpenAI to be able to actually search the internet. So again, I generally only like to talk about things that are freely available. So that's why I'm, I'm bringing this up now, because now even in the free version of ChatGPT, this is now something that occurs. So when you go in now and type in whatever prompt, it will make this decision as to whether it should search the internet or simply use its pre-trained information. So here's an example where I type this in and you can see that it just gives me information that's already been pre-trained on, right? How to give a good class, a good, what things can be done in order to have good instruction and education. It had that information already. But then when I ask it specifically something like, well, where can I find newest research dealing with this? Now it's actually searching the internet and by doing that, it gives me latest information. And then it also provides me with links, sources that I can use in order to access this information that's out on the, the internet. So that's important to understand as far as new capabilities. Of course, we've already had this with perplexity, right? You could go to perplexity, type in anything, and it gives you great responses with actual links, with actual references. But now we have this capability within OpenAI as well. Google is also going to be doing much more with this. Uh, they've been doing overviews. They've been sort of experimenting with that. Um, but now they're going to be doing that more and more in order to properly compete because they most likely will be using or they will be losing some market share to these competitors, especially if OpenAI can continue to enhance and continue to bring value to using it in that way. And when I talk to a lot of younger people, right, a lot of students, they're already starting to use OpenAI as a search engine. They were doing that even before, but now it makes even more sense so that they can quickly access information as well as to incorporate that with their actual usage of the AI. So again, it's a kind of a, a good marriage to come together anyway, so it makes a lot of sense. Uh, the two tools that I generally use are Perplexity and OpenAI because in the past of those two major differences in that perplexity could give me the up-to-date information. Um, I'm gonna to continue to test and use both of them. I like to use multiple AIs anyways in order to see who gives me a better response, something that seems more logical to me. So again, I always encourage everyone to experiment with different AIs because they can give you some different results, sometimes really different results. So it's important to, to, be, to have this understanding of what different AIs are capable of what different features they have in order to get you the best result possible. So this is important to know. Meta has come out and said that they're going to be creating an AI search engine as well. So that'll be something to, to look for in, in, the, in the very near future. There's a lot more coming out. Um, along with that, as far as what's coming out, buckle, buckle your, your seatbelts because there's a lot of things that will be coming out. OpenAI has come right out and said that GPT-5 won't be out until next year, right? So next year we can fully expect it. They said early next year, but before that, you can expect there's going to be more things that OpenAI is coming out with. They've said that they have different things that will be coming out, but not GPT-5, not yet. So that's something to, to really think about and to really start to, to, to understand and to be proactive on, to, to keep an eye out for to see how that changes the tools that we have. Now, what does this mean if we think about it even more? Well, OpenAI has stated that they have a lot of things that they want to release, but they're holding back. And other, other AIs have said this too, that they're holding back until after the election. Why? Because they don't want their tools used nefariously. They don't want their tools to be uh, implemented or have bad PR as far as being used in, in an improper way to try and sway the elections. So that's something really important to think about as well, that they've been holding back uh, because of the election. So after the elections, we can expect that there'll be new tools, new things coming out. And one of the major things is going to be AI agents. So that's the other big thing that I wanted to, to at least give an update on. Now, what are AI agents? Well, AI agents are the next level, the next capability of AI. 
we had the chatbots, right? That was the initial release of ChatGPT. It was a chatbot that you can interact with just using plain English. And then the next level was this added capability of reasoning. Um, it doesn't fully reason like a human, but now there is more capability there. There is more thought process that's occurring because it's able to look at what it's doing, think more clearly, and then be able to give a better result. So we're, we're, we're basically hitting reasoning. And then the next level will be AI agents. And what this means is that now they can actually take action. Imagine if Gemini could do all the steps for you. Searching your inbox for the receipt, locating the order number from your email, filling out a return form, and even scheduling a pickup. That's much easier, right? Let's take another example that's a bit more complex. Say you just moved to Chicago. You can imagine Gemini and Chrome working together to help you do a number of things to get ready. Organizing, reasoning, synthesizing on your behalf. For example, you will want to explore the city and find services nearby, from dry cleaners to dog walkers. You'll have to update your new address across dozens of websites. Gemini can work across these tasks and will prompt you for more information when needed, so you're always in control. That part is really important as we prototype these experiences. We are thinking hard about how to do it in a way that's private, secure, and works for everyone. These are simple use cases, but they give you a good sense of the types of problems we want to solve by building intelligent systems that think ahead, reason, and plan all on your behalf. So they can, with your permission, they can go and do actual things, go to a different website, input information, bring that information back, put it into a different website, fill out forms for you, uh, pay for things. If you give it access to an account that has money, it can actually purchase things. So it can go through and will now be able to do so many different actual actions that in the past still required a human. Now, yes, this is a little bit scary, right? There's some dangerous aspects to this, but that's going to be the, the next thing. Um, this will happen sooner rather than later. They say that by December, a lot of this will be actually occurring. Uh, again, I generally don't like to say things before they're actually available to us, but a, there's a lot of buzz going on right now because this is going to affect a lot of different jobs, a lot of different work processes. So it's important for us to be thinking about this in academia. Well, what does this mean for us? The big thing with any new tool is for us to think about how could a student use this to complete a task? How could they use this to complete one of our assignments, one of our assessments? That's why, again, I always recommend thinking about our assignments and assessments by looking at the share technique, right? I've had multiple videos talking about that, but it's important to really think about, well, now that we have these AI tools and students can access them, what does that mean for our assignments? Do we need to redesign them? Do we need to think about them again? Do we need to alter our assessment technique? Again, I love the essay. I'm always going to say that, but maybe the essay isn't the best anymore for every single type of assignment, maybe we need to incorporate other assessments, a combination, uh, alternatives, all sorts of different possibilities. So yeah, I strongly encourage the share technique to review, especially now that we're going to have AI agents that are out there. Now with the AI agents, there's gonna be different types of agents, uh, personal um, personas and company agents, all sorts of different things, and they'll be coming from different companies. So they'll, they'll function in different ways uh, there's a, a lot of buzz talking about Jarvis, which is one AI uh, agent that will be coming from Google, which will simply be an extension that you put within Chrome and you'll be able to have it function as an agent to do all sorts of different things. Same thing with Microsoft Copilot. And of course, all the other ones are going to be competing for it as well, because this is going to have major implications on what you can do and what you can have your AI do for you. So that's the big thing here now is that it's going to be an extension, an extension of yourself, an extension of your company, of business itself. So this really is going to really force us in academia to think about what does this mean? What does this mean for society? What does this mean for business, for economics? What does this mean for the overall process of education? What do we need to be teaching our students to be able to do if an AI agent can be doing these things? Well, we have to understand what it is, the capabilities, the implementation, 
And then where is the value added that comes from the human capability? So these are ongoing questions that we should be always asking ourselves, uh, society, our department itself, so that we can be proactive on this because it, it's really, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm always pushing for AI to be used as a tool, but at the same time, we have to be pushing academia itself to remain relevant. To remain relevant in the age of AI means that we have to give our students more than, much, much more than just information. They already have access to information. Even before AI, information was already there. So we, we shouldn't have focused on that. And now we definitely shouldn't just focus on information. We need to be focusing on experience. What can we do to give them greater experience with AI, without AI, giving them an opportunity to display their capabilities, again, with AI, without AI. But again, we need to ensure that we are the value added for the educational process. We're the ones that are giving them opportunity to display their capabilities and their skills, giving them experience, giving them emotional connection to the information being learned. Those are all things that we can definitely excel at because we're the human in the loop. So we need to be thinking about that, especially now that AI agents are coming. You can expect a lot more information dealing with that, how they work and what different effects we can do in academia associated with that. So keep, uh, keep your eyes and ears peeled for all of that because all of that will be coming much sooner rather than later. Okay, those are the big things that I wanted to cover to make sure that you are updated. Uh, more will be coming. Please like and share so that we can continue to learn from each other. This is the way that we can stay on top of this and really be proactive instead of just reactive. And remember, learning is for life. Mm -hmm.